we'll say find the, so you might not know what this is, it's okay, I'll, I'll tell you, find the derivative using the definition. So using the definition. So this is like a 10 point question on your test. And you'll probably have like two of these, right? Mm -hmm. Probably like two. It's not bad. Most people get it right. Even if it look, you look, oh, it's kind of hard. No, nah, you'll get it right. Like if you study, you'll get it right. You'll get it right. If you study. Yeah, if you study. What's your name? Austin. Austin? Really? Yes. Oh, wait, no. Oh, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing. No, it doesn't matter. There's a guy in my other class. His name is also Austin, but he was sitting over there. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> so confused. It's too many people. So... Uh, so the function is f of x equals, let's see, one that will probably be on the test. Um, ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, this seems like a good one. I don't want to do it, but it's probably going to be on there. One over x plus two. So a solution. All right. So, but you'll probably have two of these on your test, right? Uh, every semester, every calculus class in the entire world uh, does this. This is like one of those problems. So the first, so the formula for the derivative, whatever that is, well, let me just tell you. So if you have a straight line, right? Like say you have, say you have um, like y equals 2x plus 3. So this is mx plus b, right? What's the slope of this line? 2. two. m is 2, right? So for straight lines, we have the slope, right? It's the rise over run. So in calculus, we talk about rates of change, right? So we have random functions, and so we want to find out what the slope is of a random function. Well, the slope is going to change, right? So it's going to be like a slope function. So to find the slope for a function, it's going to change. It's not constant. It's not a constant slope. So the derivative is the slope of the function. So the derivative is the slope. So we're going to construct it from scratch next time at the beginning of class. It's really beautiful. For now, we're just going to use the formula. So the formula for the derivative is f, and then you put, I'll do it here, f, and then you put a symbol here, it's f prime, p-r-i-m-e, like prime, f prime of x, and it's equal to the limit as h approaches zero of what's called the difference quotient, which you learn, which you study briefly in college algebra. In college algebra, they make you compute this. Uh, it's like on a test, and you compute it, and you work it out. In this class, we do the same thing, Except at the end of the problem, we just plug in 0 for h. So this is the formula for the derivative, right? You may have seen this in the homework before, except instead of h, it had something else notorious. Do you remember what it was? Delta. The delta x. I know. It was like, oh. I recently, I recently like, I just mor this morning I posted a video that, from the homework, the 1 over x plus 3 when I did it. I finally posted and it's got a delta x in it. I'm like, oh. The delta x makes it so much harder. So we'll be using h. All right. So... Let's do this problem. So all you have to do is work this out, okay? So keep in mind, whenever you write the limit sign, you have to continue to write it. So you have a choice. You can write it every single time from the beginning, or you can wait to the very end to write it. Let's wait to the very end to write it. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to write it first. I'm just going to start with this. It's really important to show the work correctly. So maybe step one, write the formula down. So the formula, you'll have to memorize it, but you'll know it. There's a gazillion of these in the homework, so I'll show you, after this, I'll show you how to get the answers to the homework using the internet, in case you don't want to do them all, right? Because there's so many, right? Your, your hand will burn out. So this is equal to, so f of x plus h means we replace all of the x's here with x plus h's. So instead of one over x plus two, it's one over x, x plus h over two. Very good, yes! So all we've done is replace x with x plus h. So this is this. Everyone see it? Because f of x, I'll write it up here, f of x, which was taller, is this. So f of x plus h, you just put an x plus h there, see? x plus h. x plus h. Does everyone see it? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll write it down here. Maybe this will make it better. Watch. This is this. This is this. This is this. This is this. And this is just f of x. And then you still have the h. Let me pause here and let you catch up. 
So this is this, this is this. I'll, I'll pause, I'll pause. Hey, welcome back. Any questions on that? That's it's a hard thing in college algebra for people to grasp. So f of x is 1 over x plus 2. So f of blah is 1 over blah plus 2. So f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h plus 2. You're just replacing the x's with the x plus h. Everyone get it? Everyone get that step? Yeah. OK. All right. So now uh, we have to subtract these. The way I do it is it's kind of cheap. I just write down the product, because that's going to be the LCD. OK, so I just know that that will work. So it's going to be x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. And then we still have the h here, right? So, so we haven't figured this out yet. I just write it down first. I just know it's this times this on the bottom, OK? Ah, it's good water. OK, um, so then it's going to be 1 <laughs> times, and then here you have this, but you want this. What's missing here? X plus 2, so it's 1 times what's missing. I don't know where I learned that, but it works. Minus, and then it's 1 times what goes here? Good, very good. This is so, there's a lot of points on your test, okay? It's like final exam type stuff, so you usually have one in your final like this too. So it's really important. Let me pause here, I'll go over it again. Notice I added those parentheses there. They were already there, it's just no one ever talks about it, right? They're here, look, there's parentheses here. There's really a parentheses here, but no one ever does it. Why, because it's weird, right? But there is, if, you, if I write two over three, there's really parentheses there. And you can put a one there, right? You can do that, it's the same thing. Like, they're implied. Okay, so again, it's one times what's missing, x plus two, minus one times what's missing, x. So here we can distribute. So it'll be x plus 2 minus x minus h minus 2 over, then we have x plus h plus 2, x plus 2 over h. I'm going to show you something really cool after this. Like how to get the answers. It's really exciting. It's really, it's really, really cool website. It's free. Oh, I gotta show you something else too. Okay, so stuff goes away. Boom, 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 boom. So we have negative h over x plus h plus 2, x plus 2, and it's still in parentheses. All over h. All over h. Take your time. It's a lot of writing. <clears throat> the parentheses are important because it's this entire thing divided by h, right? This entire thing divided by h. When you divide by h, what do you really multiply by? The reciprocal, very good, which is 1 over h. So this is equal to, this is why I assigned that annoying delta x problem. I figured most people would get stuck on it, but it's good. Like, because eventually you'll get it, and then like, when we do it on Monday, which is when we're doing this, we're not really doing it today, this is, this is not really happening, um, it'll be like, oh yeah, okay, I've seen it before. So then this is x plus h plus 2, x plus 2. So in college algebra, this would be like a hard college algebra problem. You would stop here, right? And you would call that the difference quotient. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. The next step is just a formality, and it's very uh, simple. So. I'm just going to wait. So any, any questions? Some people are writing still, so I'll wait. I forgot that thing was there. Like, I just... <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> forget. Like, yeah. Okay. No questions? No questions? All right, so we worked out this piece, right? So now we just got to take the limit. So to finish, f prime of x, right? That's what we have to find the derivative of f at x. This is the slope of the function at x is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of this. So negative 1 over x plus h plus 2 and then x plus 2. It's really important that you show your work correctly. Again, notice I didn't write the limit at the beginning. 
If I write the limit at the beginning, that's fine, but you have to write it here, 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 and you have to write it here. But that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So it's seven times more work. Or I have to write it seven times, so I wanted to avoid that. So it's better to not write it and wait to the very end, okay, and then write it. And that way you can't get it wrong. Because I can't take points off because it's correct. But if you write it once, like if you write it here, like if you do this, and then you don't write it here, I have to mark some, I have to take points off because it's wrong. Like I can't, I can't be like, oh, it's whatever. No, it's wrong. It's a math class. Like, right, it's got to be right to mark it right. <laughs> Even if I want to mark it right, and I, and I can't unless it's right. So now we're going to take the limit. So we're going to plug in the zero. Do we write the limit again now? No, we drop it, right? Good, good. So this is going to be negative one over. So this is zero, right? So it'll be x plus two, x plus two. So it'll be x plus two times x plus two is x plus two squared. Yeah, and just leave it like that. A lot of times when people first see calculus, they're like, oh, should I multiply it out? No, no, just leave it. That's beautiful. That's better that way.